Hi, today I'm going to show you how you can quickly calibrate an anisotropic hyperelastic material model using M calibration. And the example I'm going to talk about uh, is for a fiber reinforced rubber, and I'm going to calibrate an anisotropic hyperelastic model that's available in ANSYS. So uh, the first step is to take a look at the experimental data. In this case, I have three experimental files tension in the zero direction, tension in the 45 direction and tension in 75 direction. And each of these files have three columns, time, engineering strain, and then engineering stress. So this is the data that I have in this example. So to calibrate this, I will just start a new window of M calibration, and here it is. I'm going to read in these files, one at a time, by just clicking on load experimental file. I'm going to do uh, the zero degree first. I say OK, save. I'm going to do the 45 degrees second, OK, save, OK, save. And um, then the third one is the 75 degree, open, OK, save. So here are the three experimental files. We'll see at the, in the zero direction, the material is very stiff compared to the other two directions. The 45 direc degree direction is, so, is the softest, and 75 is slightly stiffer than uh, the 45 degree um, direction. So when I read this in, I didn't tell the software anything about what these directions are, so I need to actually go ahead and do that. So double click on tension 00, zero and I'll take a look at loading mode. It says this is in the one direction, so that's my default direction. And that's good. I'm going to define that to be the zero direction. The 45 degree direction data, I'm going to have to tell that this is now a different direction. And the way I do that is to provide, describe a local coordinate system by this uh, image down here. So A is a vector that gives the direction in the new local direction. So that would be, and it doesn't have to be normalized here. So you're going to do 1, 1, 0. So that will be at 45 degrees. And then the B vector will be minus 1, 1, 0. So that gives me a 45 degree angle. The 75 degree definition is a little bit trickier because 75 degrees is, is kind of an uneven number in some sense. So I'm going to uh, type here uh, cosine 75 times pi divided by 180 comma sine 75 times pi divided by 180 and 0. And this one then should be um, minus sine 75 times pi divided by 180, cosine 75 times pi divided by 180, comma, 0. Um, so those are now defined in the local coordinates uh, that I want. I'm going to save this file. I'm going to call it test2. And um, then the next step is to define the material model that we want to work with. So I'm going to select the material model from the list of available material models here. And the one I want to work with today is an anisotropic hyperelastic material model that's available in ANSYS. It's a polynomial hyperelastic model. And it's a, discussed in some detail on one of the, an article that I wrote some time ago uh, here. So if you wanted to learn a little bit more about this model, take a look at this article. I'm not going to go through that here. We're just going to jump in and show how we actually use it. So I'm going to say OK. And it gives us these parameters. And these parameters have not been in initialized very well. So we're going to have to set these up properly based on the data that we have. A1, A2, and A3 are the hyperelastic matrix response of this material. So uh, what is the matrix response? We don't know. We're going to search for it, but it's certainly the lower bound of zero is a little too low. I think this is this is 10 megapascal, 0 0.1. So maybe this is a good value of five for that. This is the second order uh, dependence on the strain, and this is third order. Um, we don't need to worry about these. Uh, the strains are relatively small here, so I'm not going to search for those. The C1, C2, C3, and C4 gives us the stiffness of fiber family in the A direction down here. We know that the zero direction is the stiffest, so this fiber direction is in the zero direction. These should be pretty stiff, so we'll search for them. Um, 
Do we want it to be higher order dependence on the strain? Uh, we don't need to necessarily deal with that, but we can allow it, I guess, to be also searching for the second order term here. Um, the E parameters are going to be the stiffness in the second fiber family direction. So there are two independent fiber families. And we look at the data now, we see that at 45 degree direction is softer than at 75. So we, uh, we usually would need more experimental data than this, but we can, we can kind of think about the second direction. Well, we want it to be somewhat stiff in the 75 degree direction. So I'm going to uh, apply fibers in the zero direction and in the 75 degree direction in this case, just for the example here. In real life, you would probably look at the microstructure of your material to figure out where the fibers really are or where the reinforcements are or where the microstructure is stiffer. So this should be, I'm going to call this cosine 75 times pi divided by 180. Uh, that's my direction, and then I'm going to make this sine 75 times pi divided by 180. Um, so that gives us fibers along the 75 degree direction, and we get fibers along the 0 de degree direction. We know that the fibers in the uh, 0 de degree direction is much stiffer than the 75, so this number here should be lower than this, but we're going to search for that, and we activate the second order. And the D parameter here is simply the, uh, the, the, the inverse of the bulk modulus. We're not going to search for the angles of the fibers. We're going to let them be fixed. But this is kind of where we set this up. Um, now, the next step is to uh, run this once to see what it looks like. So I'm just clicking run once, and we'll see that, oh, it is way too soft here. But that's OK. We'll let the software fix that. So I'm going to. Um, Try to do it slow and carefully here. So I'm going to use a slow, careful optimization, the simplex optimization, because the, our guess is not very good, and we don't have good bounds on the parameters. So we're just going to start stepping away a little bit from that point slowly here. We'll see that the calibration still doesn't look very good, but it just started. I would think that the main issue at this point is that C2 needs to be much larger, C3 needs to be larger, and A may be actually good enough, because right now the stiffness comes mostly from the matrix, and it needs to um, change this. And see, it's starting to increase C2 as, as, as we expected. That uh, will make this red line go up much more for us. We can plot engineering stress strain, uh, because the experimental data was engineering stress strain in this particular case. Um, so we'll wait a little bit longer, see how the calibration evolves here. Uh, we have another situation is that we want the, the 75 degree direction to be a little stiffer than the 45 degree direction. I think we'll get that for us if we just wait a little bit longer here as it moves through these uh, iterations. So it's going to uh, wait a little bit and see how the calibration proceeds. Okay, so this has now been optimizing for about two minutes. We can see that down here. And I'm going to stop it. Um, I think the, the purpose here is to demonstrate how you do this kind of calibration. And the, if we waited longer, clearly it would get better. There are some aspects of the experimental data here that's going to be difficult to capture. The, the, the experimental data rolls over a little bit. And that probably has to do with the viscoplasticity of fibers in this particular case. And that's not part of this model, but it does a reasonable job capturing the anisotropic behavior in the different directions uh, based on the data that we have. So uh, the next step in the calibration is to export our material model to a file that we can put it into ANSYS workbench here. So I'm going to export it as an APDL file. I save it. And I'm just going to save it here. And this is our file. So let's take a look at the file we just created. Here it is. So it has these APDL commands to describe our, uh, the behavior of our material, this anisotropic rubber material. So I copy all of this to clipboard. And then um, if we want to use this 
in ANSYS, so all we need to do is we just create a model. I already have a model here. It's a very simple geometry. It's a block that's going to be pulled in tension. And um, the way you define uh, this block to have these properties is that you introduce commands. You right click on it and you insert commands. I already did that here, but I'm going to get rid of these old commands and paste in the new ones that he has calibrated. Here they are. Uh, this now defines this material to have these properties. But these properties are anisotropic. They will have behave differently in different orientations. So we also need to tell ANSYS about the orientation of these things. So um, let's take a look at uh, the orientation here. So in this case, I have defined two different local coordinate systems uh, just to play around to see how they behave. You would define your own coordinate system based on the orientation of your part. And then in the solid definition here, that we defined our properties for. You just specify which local coordinate system you want to use, and that's the one we will use in the FE simulation. So that's really all there is to it. As you see here, that it's very easy to use an anisotropic hyperelastic material model. The tricky part is really to figure out uh, which type of experiments you need to run and, uh, and actually obtaining the data. Once you have that, you can just follow the procedure that I talked about here. Um, I will create some videos in the future where I talk about viscoplastic anisotropic material models. But this is a good start. This is the more basic one. We have an anisotropic hyperelastic material model. Uh, thank you for watching and let me know if you have any questions.